What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince. I uh, want to talk about the Caribbean earthquake of yesterday. It's a pretty big one. Uh, initially, the magnitude was estimated about 8.0, uh, downgraded to about 7.6, but that is that is substantial, uh, and that is the product of a very, very large, in terms of length and, and vertical dimension, fault rupture uh, to, to release enough energy to produce a magnitude like that. Uh, I've got the location of it marked right here. I'll put the hand on top of it. We're going to zoom in on it in just a moment. But this quake occurred along a really interesting plate boundary. Uh, it's by far the closest active plate boundary to, to eastern North America where I am. We don't think about it too much. But sure enough, the, the Caribbean plate and the islands of Jamaica and Hispaniola are very much tectonically active areas, uh, sort of like you might see on the west coast uh, of North America. So getting a big earthquake there is not uh, something that is out of the question. And in fact, we see them, um, and say with, with some regularity, and, and in just the past few years, there have been a number of pretty significant ones right in what you see is a really dark area uh, under the ocean bottom here. Talk a little bit about uh, the Caribbean plate in general. It's very interesting among Earth's plates. Uh, if you kind of take it back in geologic time, uh, what you see here is the Caribbean plate today was once moving in a direction like that. It actually sort of butted up against very strong crust here that is southeast of Florida, and that kind of choked things up. And that caused the plate to start moving out into the Atlantic Basin. Uh, so what you have going on today is overall movement of the plate like this with respect to its surroundings. And this is actually a plate boundary here that has what we call this transform or, or strike slip movement along it. So it's... It's mostly this side-to-side -side movement with the occasional exception. Uh, if you were to look at one of the reports about this big earthquake yesterday, uh, you would actually see that, as we zoom in here, if you looked in the right place, which is not always easy to do, uh, you would see that it had one of these kind of beach ball diagrams, as they're called, that would look something like this. Uh, and this is what geologists use uh, to essentially indicate the style of movement uh, along the fault that actually produced the earthquake. And what this shows you is movement like that, uh, top, top going to the left. And that's about what you would, uh, what you would expect in a, location like this, because again, the overall movement along this boundary would be something like that. Now, cool part about this earthquake, and I think it did not uh, have any sort of tsunami impact. It was under the ocean, far from land. Don't think this really caused any damage, so it's a, a little bit easier to be kind of excited about an event like this because it just shows you how the earth is working. Uh, this is really, really, really deep. Uh, the thumbtack there is on what we call the epicenter. That's the the point on the Earth's surface or the ocean bottom in this case that is is directly above where the actual rupture of the fault took place. Again, the rupture would have been over a long distance, so it's it's tough to call it a point. But regardless of how you cut it, uh, that is that is about seventeen thousand feet of water there it'd be like five five kilometers a little bit over five kilometers of of water depth there which is quite quite considerable um if that water depth were perturbed somehow by movement of the ocean bottom during an earthquake uh yes that would that would potentially lead to uh, a tsunami event also you have a lot of change in water depth here only got about 2,000 feet of depth up here in this light blue, come all the way down there to about 18,000 or 19,000 feet, so pushing six kilometers of water depth in some of the dark areas there. Huge amount of relief on the ocean bottom. Uh, this is over a large lateral distance, but there is absolutely slope down there, and that sets the stage for underwater landslides as well, which could also 
kind of perturb the uh, the water column and send a tsunami wave moving out. So this um, this was an interesting event to see enter the news along with what's going on uh, in Greece, but it's a good opportunity to kind of think a little bit about what the overall setup is and, and why there are these islands in the first place uh, in this part of the Caribbean basin. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to try to sketch out here a little bit, sort of the overall setup and the type of movement that led to this earthquake is just one tiny little chapter in the ongoing evolution of the plate boundary, uh, as well as why you got those big islands up there and what sort of earthquakes and ocean effects might be expected from a movement event uh, closer to them. So overall idea here, always time for a block diagram. Start off with our section of crust there. And we're going to have this go way off in the distance up there. Have it kind of foreshortened there just a little bit. So this is going to be our plate boundary. And then have a long straightaway, okay? So like we've been talking about, uh, this earthquake was one of these, these strike slip or, or transform type of movements side to side. Normally that doesn't push rock up or down. But in this particular case, we're going to have the right side of our block moving away like that. Like that very much. That'll be better. Okay, so we got moving away like that. So let's kind of adjust our overall outline there. Get the old eraser working here. Clean this thing up. And give you a sense of that overall type of movement there. We can fill the rest of the blocks in there. All right, looking good. So right off the bat, in this little bend right here, you actually do have you do have squeezing along that boundary. And when you have squeezing between tectonic plates, that produces rock uplift. Uh, and sure enough, in that particular position along that bend there, that's actually where you got, you got Jamaica hanging out right there. And if you've ever been to Jamaica, uh, it is actually a very mountainous place. You've got the Blue Mountains on that end of the island. There's sort of like a spine of mountains that runs all the way along where that major fault boundary cuts across the island. And there's all sorts of these big kind of uplifted blocks on the south side of the island, like Spur Tree Hill there. We got any Jamaicans watching. I'm trying to uh, trying to show as much geography here as I can in this sketch. Uh, so that's what you get where, where you got the, the plates butting together there along that bend. But in this particular case, out where this earthquake occurred, it's it's just that just that side to side movement. In fact, it's a lot like the San Andreas Fault uh, in parts of California where you're away from what they call the uh, the Big Bend there, right? So if we were to kind of refine this diagram here a little bit uh, and actually just look up there at the area where the quake occurred, I'm gonna have to zoom it in here just a little bit. We'll uh, slowly kind of build our way up to something that's actually going to show things like water depth. Uh, let's see. So first and foremost, we'll come down here, something like this. And, and this actually ends up being a little bit simpler of a drawing here, I guess, at this point, because uh, you're no longer dealing with that bend there that produces uplift like you see in Jamaica. So we'd have water depth, something like, like this. Okay, and the fault is actually going to be something kind of like that. Let's get our water there in that side up just a little bit. Getting there here. All right. And if we clean up top of it here as well and end up looking at uh, an area that has this transition from, from shallow to deep water. Mm -hmm. so the ocean bottom would drop off something like that. 
Cool. All right. So let's see if we can start filling in a couple colors here. Looking pretty good so far. Okay, this is going to be that steep slope going down from the shallow water into this very deep area called the Cayman Trough here. And what's interesting about that Cayman Trough is that it actually has a little bit of oceanic crust or lithosphere uh, underneath it there. So what I've marked in gray there is sort of a more continent type of crust. It's kind of halfway between, but that's why the water is, is shallow down here. Um, this actually has a different type of crust underneath it where the water is really deep here. Totally different time of ocean bottom. That's more of what you would see almost like out in the middle of the Atlantic, and that's why the water is deeper. So when you're, you're looking at this area, there actually is tremendous geologic contrast and... That's our fault right there, right? So this side is moving like that. And again, because it's side to side, it doesn't have the opportunity to really push something up and, and produce any kind of a tsunami wave. We'll uh, add the typical green rocks of the Earth's mantle down there. People always have questions about that. If you could see rocks of the earth's mantle at the surface when they were cool they would actually have a greenish color because of the minerals they're made of they're tremendously hot down at depth in fact if they were that hot and you got them to the surface they'd start to melt anyway but uh that's just a, a convention sort of a way to uh to try to show that deep down in the earth there there is very different type of rock from what you would see shallower in the crust uh in just about every case sometimes you do see those those green mantle rocks exposed on the surface very, very rare, right? So with that big shaking event, you could have something like this where you could have a big landslide come off that steep slope, come down onto the ocean bottom there. And if that was a big enough landslide, that could end up kind of getting the ocean surface agitated a little bit. Remember that water depth is really, really incredible. It's like 17, 17,000 feet, five kilometers, five and a half kilometers. And that would send tsunami waves radiating outward. And when they began to interact with shallower water near the coast, uh, that could potentially be a very serious situation. Apparently that did not happen. And generally speaking with this type of fault movement, there's less tsunami concern. Now, if it's in shallower water, particularly if it's in like a restricted bay or something like that, there have been earthquakes uh, with, with fault movement like this that have produced big tsunamis, but they seem to be more of a, a product of certain ocean bottom water depth and, and almost land shape conditions uh, around where the earthquake occurred. So having this one far off the coast in incredibly deep water with the potential for that underwater landslide that gets people thinking uh, because you could send that bunch of waves kind of radiating outward here and there's plenty of populated coastline um, for that to uh, to interact with but it appears that uh, that nothing like that happened right so it's a, a an interesting part of the world again particularly to be so close to the eastern u.s um when you go on vacation here or whatever, I guess it doesn't, uh, it doesn't always feel like you're in this kind of really active tectonic zone, but all of the, the islands that you see here along the northern edge, these are produced by sort of localized squeezing, if you will, across sort of like bends on the edge of the plate there. Now, if you go to the Eastern Caribbean, you actually end up with, uh, we'll make them orange here, actually end up with, with volcanic uh, islands out here because the plate under the Atlantic Ocean is actually going down underneath the Caribbean plate. So, uh, so much, much closer than we, uh, than we usually think here. There's, uh, there's quite a bit going on. If you were to see uh, a big earthquake somewhere 
underwater, uh, let's say hypothetically, the news comes on and it's like there was a magnitude seven earthquake that was, you know, down, down there or something like that. In this particular case, this is one of those areas where the, the movement is very much more in that, in that kind of squeezing orientation there. And the result of that would be, uh, let's see something like this. We'll kind of, kind of block it out here. So if you had that squeezing, we're going to make this section of rock shorter, change its shape kind of like that. And that upward movement that you see there, and that is, of course, massively exaggerated just to be able to uh, be able to see what's going on here. If we put that kind of here in block format underneath the ocean, That's that's going to lift that water column and produce that kind of that kind of wavy. Oops. Produce that wavy disturbance there on the top of the ocean that uh, has a greater chance of of broadcasting outward its waves. Right. So it all depends. It all depends on where you are uh, in. The Caribbean basin because there are such a variety of uh, of tectonic settings there. But in the case of what happened yesterday, the actual slippage on the fault, uh, you know, was down down deep inside the earth. Don't know a depth for it actually. I think ten kilometers is like six miles is like a default that comes up on the USGS site. Uh, haven't seen that change. That may in fact be the depth, but it would be miles underneath the ocean bottom. But because of that type of movement. Uh, the the tsunami warning was probably related to uh, to that landslide, uh, that underwater landslide risk, and of course, pretty quickly because tsunamis travel quite fast, you get a sense of whether or not that is something that's actually going to uh, to be a concern. And fortunately, this time around, it uh, it turned out not to be. But if you find yourself looking at the news and there's a big earthquake off of Puerto Rico, off of Hispaniola you'll probably see a, a different treatment of the potential tsunami hazard because the way the plate boundary is moving there and the way the rocks can move along it, it's very easy to see quite a, uh, quite a different type of behavior there. Right. So who knows what's, what's going to happen next. Again, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting time. Seems like there's all sorts of, uh, all sorts of seismicity going on, but earth's always moving. Plates are always moving. Stress is accumulating. And you're going to see that released in, in earthquake events. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you check out the next one.